and action. <laughs> Back to the dig site. This is Smilodon Fatalis. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous replica from Bone Clones. Huge, you guys have seen it on the channel before. It's a massive, massive skull. Um, this is the second largest specimen ever discovered uh, of this species. It was found in the La Brea Tar Pits in Los Angeles. Really, really famous animal. Probably the one of the key symbols of death in the paleontological community. I mean, you, you see this animal, everyone in the general public looks at this thing and they know what it is. This is Smilodon. This is the saber tooth cat. It's just terrifying. What a terrifying, terrifying skull. That's mortifying. Now, you look at this thing, and to most people, I just dislocated its jaw, but that's fine. To most people, they would assume this thing could kill anything. It was this vigorous, ferocious cat. It would rip everything apart. But it doesn't really make sense once you look at the deeper stuff. I mean, look at the teeth. Look how brittle they are. They're so thin. They're so, so sharp. Anything hits one of these guys, they're going to break. There's nothing there to support it. No bony phalanges like the other, like the Machirodons or the Meganterium. No bony phalanges to support those teeth. Its skull is really, really strong and big and bulky though. So why would you have such a big, fat, such a broad and long and massive head if you've got such brittle, small and sharp teeth? If you've got such brittle, thin teeth? Well, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> You see, Smilodon didn't hunt like any conventional modern-day big cat. It was so specialized. It was insanely specialized. Look, just every single small detail, every single part of this skull is designed for its killing mechanism. The one way this animal kills its prey. You see, Smilodon could open its jaw to a 90 degree angle. And that makes sense. I mean, you've got these big teeth, you're going to need that space to bring them down on top of a prey animal. You need a lot of space to get those teeth moving. But look at the incisors. They're huge, they're bulky, they're strong, they're, they're really, really deep down there in the bottom jaw. They're unlike anything that modern cats have today. They're really, really strong, big teeth. And then look at the molars. Look how far back those molars are in the jaw. Most big cats, their teeth are pretty lined up. They don't leave a lot of space between their teeth. But look at the, if I can fit, what, three fingers in that huge cavern right there. The molars line up here. They, the whole jaw, when it's shut, the jaw lines up perfectly. I just made it like a trombone. That's just the brain case back there. Big old hole in the back. I mean, why would it need this stuff? This seems almost detrimental to a predator. I mean, most predators bite into their prey a whole bunch of times. You can't really do that with this kind of a skull. This is a one hit kill predator. It had to get that one hit. So how could it have possibly been successful? Well, to explain that, you need more than a skull. Unfortunately, I don't have more than a skull of Smilodon. Uh, I only have the skull. I don't have a skeleton to describe. I don't have the four limbs. Um, one day, one day when I'm a multi-billionaire, I'll, I'll buy it. But yeah, I'm just gonna have to use my own body to explain this. Also, I'm hunched over because my tripod's not tall enough. So, my back's really, really hurting me right now. This is not gonna hurt. This is not gonna help either. Smilodon was actually itself kind of a hunchback. Its forelimbs were bigger than its hind limbs. It had much, it was like a gorilla. You guys seen uh, silverback gorillas? They walk upright like that and they got this hunch going down, their body slopes like on an angle. That's kind of how Smilodon walked. And it's really, really a really strange way for a big cat to behave because most big cats, even small cats, are very horizontal. They're very balanced. Their body, their legs are the same height. 
You know, they're, they're very, very capable of moving around. They're really, you know, they need that for their maneuverability. Smilodon didn't have that stuff. It wasn't very maneuverable and it wasn't very fast. So how could it have possibly been an effective predator? Well, when you examine these big forelimbs, the bones are really dense and thick. They're strong, they're tough. If they take, they can take hit after hit after hit and they won't break, they won't even fracture. They're really, really strong. They're the strongest forelimbs of any big cat ever. If you took those forelimbs off Smilodon and no one ever discovered Smilodon before, they would assume they belong to a bear. That's how thick and strong these legs are. They're like tree trunks on a cat. And that's simply because Smilodon was so big and muscular and bulky. This thing was built like a brick shithouse. It was huge. And it needed to be. It didn't hunt wildebeest. It didn't hunt antelopes. This thing hunted giant prehistoric sloths and even woolly mammoths. It, it needed to be huge and bulky and muscular to tackle them to the ground. Tackling them to the ground. Now, why would a big cat want to do that? You see, Smilodon kind of needed to tackle stuff to the ground. That's why its legs were so big. And maybe that's a factor playing in with its killing mechanism. If we take a look at the skull again, remember when I told you about how it couldn't bite repeatedly? Well, what if Smilodon tackled its prey to the ground, jumped on its prey, used its own body weight, its own strength to, to push this animal over, it's pinned it down to the ground, and it's restraining it, it's wrestling it, it's got it down. You see, if you look at the teeth again, Smilodon's teeth are really brittle, they're very thin, uh, and this has you know, perplexed scientists for decades. And only until recently, they sort of figured out that maybe they're brittle because they didn't need to be tough. Maybe they're brittle because Smilodon wasn't biting into bone. You see, all modern cats go for the neck. That's what people are confused about. Smilodon can't do that. It can't bite into a spinal cord, its teeth will break. It can't bite into a rib cage, its teeth will break. It can't even bite into the back of an animal, that big bony pelvis, because its teeth will break. So where did it bite into? The soft parts, the jugular and the stomach. This thing went for the arteries and it went for the organs. It was a one hit kill monster. It would open up its jaws, pinpoint, on the animal where it's going to bite, wrestled it down, pinned this animal down to the ground, open up its jaws in a huge 90 degree angle and just bite down into this flesh. The guttural, jugular, muscular areas of the animal, there's no bone there. It would bite down, clamp down, lock down its jaws like a lock and just pull out those huge muscular legs, pushing off the big muscular neck, pulling away. Big, huge, raw, muscular skull containing that flesh, ripping that muscle, all the tendons, the muscle, the arteries, the organs, pulling them away. And you're left with a cavity in an animal about that big. A chunk of flesh, roughly, probably the size of my head, gone. That is devastating. That's brutal. There's no other predator in history, maybe with the exception of the Tyrannosaurs, that hunted in such a brutal, gory, and bloody fashion. This thing was unrelenting. If you got bit by a Smilodon, you were dead. But then what? But what if you weren't? What if you survived the bite? What happened to you then? Well, unfortunately, you've still got a lot of bad news. Because frankly, to lose a chunk of your body the size of a human head is really not very healthy. It also means that you're probably gonna bleed a lot. And Smilodon loved that. It relied on that. It would pursue its prey, probably not very far considering the injury that it had sustained. It would just follow it. Just follow along, walking along behind it. The prey can't fight back, it's too injured. It might collapse in a stream or a river or down a hill. And when it collapses, that's it. It might not even need another killing blow. It would just simply wait. The animal would bleed to death and all of that, all that blood, all that bleeding would do the job for the Smilodon. And then all it had to do was eat. So how did it eat? That's a good question. And I'm going to explain it. <laughs> Should I just drop my scissors? So, I told you guys earlier about these really weird, really robust incisor teeth, right? The skull's not lined up, there we go. <laughs> Those big, really robust incisors. You got these big, robust molar teeth at the back. Funnily enough, it actually ate very similar, probably, to how most modern canids do, canines, dogs, basically. Um, it would use these front till uh, incisors here to shear flesh from the bone. Because it can't bite in with this stuff, they'll break, the canines, they'll break. I think one of the pins is coming out of the teeth, that's not good. 
might have to super glue those teeth in, which is going to be a bit of a shame. Um, <laughs> so it would shear from the bone like, um, I'm trying to think of something, like a cheese grater, right? Just rubbing them along, you know? Shearing, 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 shearing away, pulling flesh, just the skin, the, the, the thinner muscles on the bone, it would just pull that sort of stuff away. Then once it's got all that flesh in its mouth, it'll chew it up with these big grinding molar teeth, like a herbivore. Just grind and grind. You can hear it, you can hear it. You can hear them scraping. That, that's that scraping sound, that's the molar teeth. Dogs do it. I, I, I haven't seen big cats do it on a scale like this. Um, tigers might, they hunt kind of similarly. Um, but yeah, this is a, a very, very unorthodox hunting method for a big cat. It's really, really quite strange. Um, but it was clearly very, very successful. Smilodon, so far, as far as we know, has three species. You've got um, Smilodon fatalis, Smilodon gracilis, and Smilodon populator, which lived in South America. That was the last of the Smilodons. Um, after this one, after fatalis went extinct, uh, populator. Whether or not fatalis evolved into populator, I'm not sure. I think it did. I think uh, fatalis must have moved south uh, as the ice age begun. Point of the matter is, it went south and it got bigger and it got muscular, and that was smart on populator. And I'll probably buy a populator skull soon, but there is a skull on my checklist before that, and that's the North American lion. I really, really want to get one of those skulls. It'd be really, really cool. Um, and I'm going to be probably ordering that maybe next week. Um, I just need to... The problem with uh, bone clone stuff is that they're just so expensive. They're fantastic, really, really great for educational stuff like this, but they're just really, really, really costly. Um, because they're really museum quality uh, replicas. They're fantastic, they're, they're brilliant. Uh, I've got the sand for small on down there, and um, I've also just noticed something. This is my uh, Tasmanian Devil Skull. It's got kind of a similar dentition to small one, except for the molar teeth, they're different. But you see these incisors. Now marsupials generally have much more, many more incisors than uh, other mammals do. This thing has eight incisors on both rows. It's got pretty big canine teeth too. Uh, that light is too glary, you can't even see it. I'm really sorry about that. Uh, let me just try and like kind of, there you can see it a bit better like that. Um, yeah, so that's the Tasmanian Devil, smiled on over there. Uh, so yeah, that's how smiled on ate, that's how smiled on hunted. I uh, hope you guys learned something in this video. I really, I've been wanting to make this video for a little while. Uh, I get really energetic about this sort of stuff. I love talking about fossils and animals and zoology and paleontology and all that good stuff. I love it, I love it, I love it. So yeah, I hope you guys learned something. If you did, leave a comment. Tell me, if you question anything that I've mentioned in this video, please uh, let me know. Uh, if you want to criticize me, let me know that as well. I love criticism. Uh, um, you can feel free to like or dislike the video. I don't really care about that sort of thing. And I will see you guys next time. Cheers. <laughs> Grabs a real chunk of it. And we're using those huge forelimbs, using those huge neck muscles, it pulls back and it rips out this huge chunk of flesh. Blood's going everywhere. The jugular vein might have been severed. This thing pulls back, takes this chunk of flesh, it devours it, of course, and then it sits there.